Hi, my name is Maddie, and I am so excited to be the one to announce this next Serve Week. This season, we'll be doing outreach not just to our local community, but internationally as well. We will be partnering with the House Guadalajara, a church in Guadalajara, Mexico, for their local outreach to an underserved Pueblo near them, where we'll be helping fund Christmas presents, food, games, a whole celebration that these kids otherwise would not have. Locally, we'll be partnering with the Foster Care Resource Center, the organization we helped do the shoe drive with earlier this year. And we'll be doing a, a toy drive to help donate toys to these foster children who otherwise may not have the opportunity to receive gifts like this. So we would love for you to come be a part. There are three ways where you can come and join us this serve week. One, you can help donate. You can go to thehousela.org slash give and find the drop down menu where you can give funds that we will be sending to the House Guadalajara for them to put on this Christmas celebration. Two, you can help donate toys to the Foster Care Resource Center as a part of our toy drive. You can follow the link below to be able to go to an Amazon wish list we already created, buy toys, get them sent to your house and bring them into service. If you would like to participate online, please reach out to your online contact so that they can send you the address that you can get those toys delivered. And three, you can come volunteer. Following the registration link below, you can also come and write notes to these children, whether it be in Guadalajara, Mexico, or locally in LA, because we want these kids to know they are loved by their church and they are loved by God. So any way that you choose to be a part, we want you to come and be a part of what God is doing at the house this season at Serve Week. Hey, welcome to the house. My name is Wes. My wife Vanessa and I, we are the lead pastors here and thank you so much for joining us today. Today is a very special day as we are on this series called On Purpose that we are joined with a very special guest, Pastor Jenny Smith. She's not only a hero for Pastor Vanessa and I, but she's also a board member here at the house. She's got some great stories to share. And I wanna just throw out one of the scriptures that we're gonna talk a lot about today, and it's found in the Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 10, where Jesus says this, the thief or the enemy comes only to steal, to kill and destroy. But I, Jesus, he says, I've come that you may have life and life in all of its fullness, all of its abundance. And so while we talk on the subject of on purpose, think about that scripture that Jesus comes to give life and life more abundantly. I'll see you at the end of the message. Pastor Jenny, it is such an honor to have you with us today, not only online, but also in person. And so uh, for those who are watching this, if you're here in Los Angeles and you want to come on out, you can join us at four o'clock for our service. We'll throw all of the, uh, the address and directions down below. But Pastor Jenny, you are not only an overseer at our, at our church, uh, you are my boss. You've, all, you've been my boss since I've been like 22. <laughs> so almost two decades you've been my boss. Um, but uh, you, you are on our board of overseers here at the house. Um, but one of the, the hallmarks of your life, uh, w which there are many, one of the hallmarks of your life was that you helped found uh, something called City Ministries. And City Ministries is something that, it's a ministry that has poured out and blessed uh, so many people. Um, how did that start just as a ministry and what did that encompass? Well, in actual, actuality, it wasn't necessarily a part of our master plan. It just kind of evolved through the process of being willing to reach out and minister to people's needs. And in city ministries is actually started from the city church, which I feel is very important. Anytime you're involved in benevolent ministries, 
um, helping people in need and so forth, it's always good to attach it to the church, to the community of believers, where there's resources and opportunities um, to grow the ministry and actually involve people beside yourself in the process. But it happened to be that City Ministries was the result of a bakery in town calling our church and asking us if we'd be willing to disperse their imperfect loaves of bread because they weren't able to sell them. And so we just asked this amazing couple in our church who had a heart for, for needy and hurting people. And would you be willing to go to the bakery and pick up the bread and pass it out to, to different communities in need? And it happened to be that we lived in a community that had a lot of apartment complex, low income apartment complexes. And so they would just take the bread and then that just grew from there because one vendor would tell another vendor, this group is trustworthy. You know, they're not eating the profits. They're not selling it online. Mm -hmm. They're actually giving it away. And so you can entrust them also to, with your imperfect products. And so it just grew exponentially. And it, we just kind of sat back and watched it happen. And people that belong to the church had a heart for ministering to the needy joined in and it just kind of grew into a very large ministry for some time and then after a season of about 15 years it was no longer needed there was oh, many different agencies within the confines of our city that were taking care of the need and so we took our dollars and put them in a different expression because in that case um, it was no longer needed now Another ministry that happened kind of in a similar way was our ministry to single moms and their children. We had a lady come, a single lady, and um, ask us if she could do something for single moms and their children. Because again, there was not really anything in our community for that specific group. And so we said, absolutely. Well, it ended up, it went so far, we ended up buying a beautiful house that had a menagerie of rooms and bedrooms and we were able to house single moms and their families we were able to help with their expenses we were able to minister to them help them get schooling necessary education so that they could work and and provide for their family and and again that was a seasonal type um, um objective that we took on it didn't last forever mm -hmm. after 10 years there was no longer a need um, this many times, you know, welfare, the city and or other organizations picked up that particular area of need. So it, it's just a matter of being sensitive to the need at hand and being willing to be involved. It didn't mean the whole mm -hmm. church had to be involved, but oftentimes God will put it on people's hearts, individuals' hearts in an area of interest or concern, and they'll you know, ask to be able to do something. And all we have to do is provide a few resources and, and they, you know, for the most part made it happen week to week and people's needs were met. Wow. So in both cases with the, this what started with bread, which I didn't know that story. I don't know how I don't know that story that some baker came to you and says, Hey, we, we can't get rid of this bread. You know, it's, it's, you know, the, the, maybe the sizing is right. Doesn't fit in our bags or something like that. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, and with the case of uh, the single mother's home, which I actually, I, I remember that property. And, you know, I, I also remember that it was the very first property that the city church had ever owned. Exactly. Exactly. Was that property. But, it, you know, I feel like that was indicative of, of the call on the church. And I don't think we really realized the depth of the call mm -hmm. on the church to minister to people in need. It just was simply happened. And, mm -hmm. um, and then, and we just said, okay, let's try, let's investigate, let's invest some funds and see what we might be able to do. And then in each case, each of those ministries grew and, um, and took on a life of their own and to the point where we not only had a single mom's house with children, but a foster care community that, that we initiated and built 22 homes for foster care families and foster care children. And so what, when we started this whole process, we had no idea, honestly, I wish we were that yeah. smart, but uh, we didn't, it just <laughs> happened. It just, you know, one thing kind of evolved into another and, you know, people stepped up and look what the Lord has done. It's amazing. That's, that's amazing. I, I just, I, I'm seeing the progression of from a loaf of bread to a single mother's home 
to 22 homes for uh, children in foster care. It's like each faithfulness. And it's like, I wonder if what would have happened if you said no to the bread? What would have happened if you said no to the single mother's house? It's like one, you know, it's like you take on a lion, you take on a bear, and then you take on a Goliath like situation. So my question is this, each of those are so different. And there were seasons where like the Holy Spirit is highlighting a certain area, whether it's food, and then in the next case, it's a, it's a home. In the next case, it's multiple homes and a foster care, literally an agency. How did you, I think all of us, we can really grab a hold of something and say, this is our thing. We do bread and we get a name, we get a logo, we, we get really diehard into that thing. How did you pivot when you felt like the Holy Spirit saying, hey, this is the new thing for this season, or this is the new thing for this season? How did you pivot? You know, it wasn't very difficult because people were enthusiastic and, and people were excited about what was happening. And so, to, you know, and it didn't just go from handing out bread to to the single mom's home, you know, mm. the bread ministry grew. And so we were then ministering um, to countless families and through different apartment complexes, low income apartment complexes, and we were distributing all kinds of food products that that the vendors were investing in us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it grew in spite of us. I don't think we actually had a master plan, as I said, <laughs> for all of this to happen. It was just like one thing kind of opened the doors for another. And in some cases, some doors closed, but it wasn't as if, you know, we came up with this great grandiose plan. I think the Holy Spirit always had it planned. And, um, and all we had to do was just be willing to step out and see what God would do. And it, and by saying that, I'm not just saying the pastors stepped out, but the people stepped out yeah. and yeah. Um, fulfilled the need at hand. And honestly, much to our surprise, things just kept growing and expanding and taking on, you know, a life of its own, you know, and I really generated and motivated by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Where did this all come from? I mean, I know that someone came to you with the idea, hey, we've got this bread, but lots of things come your way. So was there something, was there a spiritual awakening? Was there a prophetic word? Like what awakened this in your heart to say, hey, this is something that we should do? Was it an experience you had personally? Was it a Holy Ghost kind of moment? What, why this and why, like, why yes to these things? Well, first of all, I think, um, I'm reminded of the scripture where Jesus came to give and to give life more abundantly. And so Jesus' mm -hmm. whole mission to coming to earth was to be a giver. And we are, we are made in his image. And so we are most fulfilled and satisfied when we are in that kind of mode of giving also. And so providing the people with opportunity and means to give is only going to bless them. It's only going to put them in a situation where they are able to bless others and so I think if there was an objective on our part, it was just to include people in the process of what God was telling us to do, that um, it wasn't a matter of just a committee or a few people um, actually giving, but we were encouraging everyone to find an expression of giving, whether that was distributing bread or working with single moms or working with foster children or some other expression of service or ministry within the body of Christ but the goal and the objective is always to bless people and that was Jesus goal he you know he came to bring life he came to bless he came to minister he came to strengthen and so we have that same means we have that same mission and so we just provided people with a means of expression and oftentimes it wasn't you know the fact that we were so smart and came up with the opportunity but they came up with them all on their own and said can we do this and we yeah. were just saying, yes, go for it, try it, see what might happen, you know, in the circumstances. And in most cases, it just astounded us what God did. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. I even think of, uh, for us, it was at the very beginning of 2020, right around the spring when we, we started seeing, hey, people aren't able to go to work. Uh, they're not able to go to their normal jobs. Like we just kind of put two and two together. And so we reached out to our city and it was that need within the city that they connected us with an organization that we came alongside and that, you know, for almost two years now, we're their key volunteers, we're some of their key supporters. Um, and it's been something from within the needs of the city. It wasn't like we came out and said, you know, here's the thing. Um, when you're faithful with a little, 
you're going to get more. I mean, that's true, not just with the Lord, you know, with our relationship with God, if we're faithful with a little, he's going to give us more, but also that's true of the city. If you're faithful, you know, with the vendors who entrusted us with the loaf of bread, if you're faithful mm -hmm. with what you've been given, you're going to find <laughs> that you're going to have more. Um, now with that, uh, someone once told me that the, the reward of work well done is more work. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> more For those watching, yes. that was Pastor Jenny who always said that. If you do, you're, you're, you're trusted trust with little, trust you get entrusted yes. with what? Work, the reward yeah, yeah. of work well done is, is more work. And so you're going to be asked if you are, um, again, an individual that can organize and administrate and you do it well, you're probably going to find yourself with a job and more yeah. opportunities, even as a volunteer. And, uh, yeah. and we'll be forever grateful for the volunteers all those years, because honestly, it's the volunteers that made it happen week to week. And it's mm -hmm. the volunteers that followed through and were faithful. It's the volunteers that were interfacing with the individuals who we were ministering to. And um, mm -hmm. so we'll forever be grateful for those individuals that gave up their time and their energy and invested in the lives of people. Yeah. I, I yeah. think there'll be testimonies you know, in the hundreds of people's lives that were ministered to and blessed through faithful mm -hmm. volunteers. Yeah, amen to that. Um, as we look to the future of the church, um, which it's it's so different, no one could, you know, foresee these times in, in, in the exact, I mean, I, I think prophetic people had a sense, hey, there's a change, there's a shift coming, but no one saw what we what we see and what we're experiencing now. In regards to the church helping the poor and the needy and being active in the community, being, you know, being involved in the community, you're, you're involved in so many different churches, but also you have a prophetic edge as well. And you see to the future, you're able to see and sense like, hey, this is what I see the Lord saying and what I see the Lord doing. In regards uh, to the church and the future and helping the poor and the needy, what do you think, what do you think is ahead and what do you think it could look like? Well, I think the church as an institution um, is called, their mission, their commission is to minister to people in need, whether that's financial need or that's emotional, psychological, whatever need people mm -hmm. might be dealing with. And so that's, I believe what we've been called to do. We've been set aside for that very purpose. So it shouldn't be surprising that mm -hmm. opportunities I believe directed many times by the Holy Spirit open up for us to step in and they're, they're very as, as the needs of people vary. So I don't think it's one dimensional. I don't think it's just giving people food. We don't need a lot of food in the United States of America. We're not, you know, a third world nation in that regard. And so maybe that isn't necessarily where you find expression as a church, but there certainly are, <laughs> many different needs represented by our nation that we can, you know, be sensitive to and, you know, allow for people to be inspired to help. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, at the holiday times, it's such a yeah. hard time for so many, especially children that don't have, you know, the means to, or the opportunity to be with family, et cetera. And so we, mm -hmm. we as a church can, step into that role and be able to minister to the lives of those children. We do um, a big Christmas party every year for single um, moms and their children. And the single moms get to come to the party and pick out what they want for their child, including some clothing and some toys and some, you know, different candy and so forth for Christmas. And again, it's not that it's a, a huge impact necessarily, but it's, it's expressing the love of Christ. It's suggesting that we care. We know that you're here and we want to help you. Yeah. And, um, and then opening the doors of the church and, and having the party in the church is, again, another means of you know, opening our hearts as such yeah. to the lives of these individuals. So I don't think it's yeah. one dimensional. I don't think it's just food or, you know, it's, it's yeah. just meeting financial needs. It's a variety of things. And, um, and I think 
churches like people have callings, they have giftings, they have personalities, and the church will take on a life of its own, and you will have, you know, with your expertise, with the call that's on, on your and Vanessa's life, it's going to help guide the church in directions of service and ministry and blessing the community yeah. that you live in. One of the things I love that you said about the, the Christmas party that you do at the church, and that even though I, I think for some people, I've seen in some uh, humanitarian type work uh, where people who were, you know, just die hard, maybe more on the preaching side, and they didn't really believe in it uh, of just doing humanitarian type work because they, they just wanted someone to preach the gospel. And then I see other people on the other side that they just do humanitarian and they don't preach, but I think doing humanitarian work within, within the church. And I, I think that that preaches so well that those kids and those families, they may not hear a message preached on that day while they're going to get a gift, but they know that building, there's something special about that place. There's something special about those people that, and it's getting what the, the scripture that you'd reference in John 10, 10, where Jesus says, I've come that you would have life and life more abundantly. It's getting that doctrine in them. And it's like, it's like leaven out there. It's getting that doctrine in them, whether they recognize it or not, they're getting the message that Jesus is here to give them life. Exactly. And that, and, and it's not just people with financial needs that we have to be open to minister to. I know one of the the biggest impacts that we've had over the years is ministering to our first responders, the police department, fire department, yeah. and inviting representatives from those organizations to come to church. And we hand them then gift cards that they are then able to make available to people in need as they meet them in the course of their, you know, of their jobs. And yeah. we'll also, you know, give them teddy bears to hand out to children that are in need in the course of their jobs. And so they're able to do more than just their, their jobs in, in, in sense of um, showing expressions of, of care for that individual by giving them actual uh, something that can help them, um, even if it's just as simple as a toy to a child. And so yeah. there's a lot of things that, that we can do that you know, are not, again, just restricted to one means of investment in the lives of people we can be quite creative and if you give the people the opportunity within the confines of your community of believers you know the holy spirit's good at talking to individuals and inspiring them <laughs> to step yeah. up to different capacities yeah one of the things that we're doing as a church we have a serve week coming up and where we are going to be uh, focusing on two different organizations one is um, our foster care resource center here in Los Angeles. And they, we partnered with them before and we bought uh, 200 pairs of shoes for kids. 200 kids registered for this event. Uh, they, had to be, um, they had to be through the foster care resource center. So they did all the vetting and they sent us all these people. And we bought, we said, hey, what's your name? Chad, what size shoes do you want? Seven. So we went and bought size, size seven shoe for Chad. And so he shows up and say, hey, here's your, here's your shoes. And then we bless him with groceries. Uh, one of the kids we found out that, uh, that day, I was going to say his name. I remember his name, but um, just to, to cover him, um, he showed up that day and it was his birthday. And so we sang him happy birthday. Someone went and got him a birthday cake. And so he was just so blessed. But he actually came uh, recently to our, uh, we had a fall fun festival on Halloween. And he came and they invited other people as well. Some friends that were saying, hey, you should come be a part of this. So we're going to partner with that same organization. We're going to do a giving tree. And then um, for uh, about 30 of those kids, we're just going to bless them and bless those families. The second component is we're going to partner with uh, some people that you know very well. Uh, the Jaquiths in, in Mexico at the House Guadalajara, unrelated, same name, but unrelated, the House Guadalajara. And we're going to partner with them uh, as they do some outreach into their community. They're going to help about 200 kids uh, in one of their local areas. Um, they put on a Christmas party for them. They give them food and gifts and things like that to really encourage the kids to stay in school and break the cycle of poverty that a lot of these kids have when they're tempted to maybe go get a job rather than uh, continue on in education, which is one of the key components uh, for them to break that cycle. And then we're gonna bless uh, their church and bless those pastors as well. And then we're also gonna write some letters uh, to both uh, the kids here in LA and the kids in Guadalajara, just letting them know like, hey, we love you. You, you don't know us, but there's a church who's praying for you. So 
with that as maybe, and as we kind of wrap up, um, one of the questions I'd have for you is, I know that people of means, they, they can jump in right away and they know, hey, here's what I can do. They obviously have to have a heart to do that. Um, and then sometimes there's people without a means. They go, hey, I don't have the money, but I want to help in some way. How, how have you, in, in your decades of ministry, how have you encouraged people to get involved who have money? And how have you encouraged people to get involved who don't have money? Well, I think in actuality, there's not much difference. You know, I think just giving money would be limiting what the Holy Spirit wants to do. But we do need mm -hmm. we do need funds in order to buy the shoes and minister to the children in Mexico. And so there is that necessary you know, need for benevolence in that regard, but also the individuals that are going to disperse the individual that's going to go and give, you know, the child a hug and help them find their shoes and, and spend time, you know, mm -hmm. investing in them. And so it's both and I don't think it's either or. And so there's, mm -hmm. there, there is a means of expression for both for the, those that might have, you know, the extra funds and are able to invest monetarily, you know, in the project, but also those who are willing to go and give and spend time setting up and um, making it um, a fun time for the children and or the people that you're ministering to. So I, I don't think we should feel bad if we choose to give funds and are not able because of time restraints to give our, our time and energy. But we must see that giving time and energy is just as valuable and just as important yeah. as giving funds. Awesome. That's that one is not more important than the other. We need both and. And so, um, and I commend you, I commend your church. I know that, you know, you've gone through some hard times, difficult times during the COVID and a lot of churches have, and the way that you have just maintained an attitude of faith and you haven't drawn back from blessing others and ministering to others as the Holy Spirit's given you opportunity. And I want, I think it's wonderful and a great testimony to the grace on your church. I mean, there's obviously a calling to do so. And just in the same way, as I mentioned, that there's calls on people, there's also calls on churches or they're yeah. set aside a commission by the Holy Spirit. And I think that um, there's great grace on, on you and Vanessa to lead the way and to see people's lives impacted in a powerful and dynamic way. And, you know, you might think that the child forgets the toy that you handed them um, in that time of need, but honestly, they never forget. And that's going to be a means of the Holy Spirit just um, blessing that child for the rest of their life, making them feel yeah. loved and accepted. So you're doing a great job. I want to commend the whole church for stepping up to the plate and doing what your hand finds to do and doing it with all. I'm very, very proud of you. Thank you so much, Pastor Jenny. As we, as we wrap up, uh, would you pray for our church and pray for us? And, uh, because I, I would, I think it would just be such an honor of us not only to have your prayer, but that if heaven sought that a, that a piece of that anointing that was on you would be on us as a church. And so as she's praying, if you're watching this, you just do like what I do sometimes when I'm praying. I'll just, if someone's praying for me, I'll hold out my hands like this, just in a, in a mode to receive. But Pastor Jenny, would you pray for us and pray for our church? Father, I just thank you for your grace and strength that you've imparted to pastors Wes and Vanessa and to their church, the House LA. I believe they've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. You set them apart, Lord. You've called them and directed them to be a blessing to their community. And I pray as you open doors and make opportunities available, they will step in with enthusiasm, excitement, anticipation of all that you might do. And our greatest prayer, Father, is that people would be saved. People would come to the knowledge of the truth. Lives would be forever changed because of the investment, both spiritually and naturally. And again, I thank you for this amazing church and pray your blessing on them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Jenny, and thank you everyone for joining us today. If you like, if you're here in Los Angeles, please join us tonight. If you're watching this live, uh, Pastor Jenny, we are so honored to have you not only online, but also in person uh, tonight at our service. We love you so much. God bless. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that that message not only encouraged you, but also inspired you. Uh, I hope that it inspired you not only to make a decision to follow Jesus, but also that your life can make a difference, that you can live not on accident, but you can live on purpose. 
as someone made in the image of God, you were made at, at the scripture that we talked about that he has come to give life and life in all of its fullness. You were made in that image as well. And when you give and when you participate in giving and giving life to others, you are actually, that is the most real version of who you are. If you'd like to make a step in following Jesus, we'd love to help you. You can go to thehousela.org and you can click on a button that says next steps. Or if you have a prayer request, you can go on there as well and hit connect and let us know. We would love to encourage you as you take steps to follow Jesus, to follow him in generosity and to make a difference with your life. Also, if you'd like to join us, I mentioned today, uh, if you'd like to join us in this journey of generosity where we're going to help the Foster Care Resource Center here in Los Angeles, we're going to partner with the House Guadalajara and the, the missions efforts that they're doing there, and we're going to do so many other things, writing letters, you can participate. If you're a part of our church, you can absolutely participate on top of your tithes and offerings, and you want to give, and you say, man, I want to, I want to participate in this, you can give. But it, let me just say this. You do not have to be a part of our church to participate in this. Anyone, you can be a part of this. So you can just go to thehousela.org and you can click on give. And as you scroll down, there's a couple different ways. There's ties, there's offerings, there's online campus, but there's one that says serve week. And if you want to participate in what we're doing for the foster care resource center, or if you want to participate in what we're doing for the house of Guadalajara, you can give there. Uh, you'll also find on the website uh, that there's that giving list for the foster care resource center and just how you can participate you can give on that and i want to make i want to make sure something's very clear we do not take any administrative fees we don't take any fees from this we actually are are going to add to it so whatever we're, we always round up in our generosity and we're going to bless these organizations we're going to bless these kids and you can be a part so thank you so much uh, for participating with us in that. It means so much. And together we're going to make a difference. So I uh, can't wait to see you back next week. We are going to be joined by another great hero of Pastor Vanessa and I. His name is Pastor Philip Wagner. He is a true hero. We hope to see you whether online or in person. If you're here in LA, my goodness, come visit us on person or on person, in person, four o'clock. Uh, we'll throw the address down below, but we would love to see you. Otherwise, we'll see you back next week here at the house.